Yo, what's going on everybody? It's Jonathan, and I know I'm a little late to the party, but this is my full review of the Alcatel Idol 3. And I've had the phone for quite a bit of time now, and I never did a first impressions or unboxing video, but that's because I wanted to share with you my full experience with this super budget phone that retails for about 250 bucks, and it comes with a great, great experience. So if at any given point you feel like checking this phone out for yourself, you can hit up the description of this video and you'll find a link that will take you over to Amazon and from there you can purchase it. But for now, let's go ahead and jump straight into the unboxing. So inside the box, you're gonna get a SIM tray ejection tool. You're gonna get a micro USB to standard USB cable. Then you get your wall plug and then you also get a set of headphones. These are JBL headphones. They sound really good for headphones that come with your phone out of the box. They feature inline controls as you can see by that play and pause button. And then you also have an inline microphone. It does come with a couple different size earbuds in case the ones that come already installed on the headphones don't fit. And then finally, you get your quick start guide or your user manual in case you guys need to look through that. We'll go ahead and take a quick look around the Idol 3 starting on the rear of the phone. On the top left, you're gonna find your 13 megapixel camera with a single LED flash. The Idol 3 may look like it's made of high grade premium materials on the back side, but it's in fact plastic. And that plastic is pretty much texturized like an aluminum or metal brush finish. And you'll notice this when you pick it up in the hand, but that's not really a bad thing because it's still quite durable. I just wish it was more texturized, that way it gives you a better grip whenever you hold it. On the left hand side, you're gonna find your power button, which is actually all the way at the top of the phone, so it's a bit awkward. And then you're gonna find your SIM card tray, which which actually doubles as a micro SD card slot, expandable up to 128 gigabytes. Moving things over to the right hand side, you're going to find your volume rocker, which again is all the way at the top of the phone, and I'm going to discuss my issues with the button placement in just a minute. On the bottom of the Idol 3, you're going to find your micro USB port as well as a microphone. Now the micro USB port is shifted all the way over to the right side, so if you have any docks, this may not work with some of your docks. On the top of the phone, you're going to find your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack as well as another microphone. Now just like the faux metal design on the back of the Idol 3, the sides are actually like a faux chrome design so don't let the looks fool you but that's not really a bad thing because I haven't experienced any chipping or scratching something that I did with the chamfered edges on the iPhone on the front side you're gonna find dual stereo speakers you're gonna find one at the bottom and then going up to the top you're gonna find another one as well as your dedicated sensors your LED notification light and then your 8 megapixel front-facing camera the Idol 3 may not be made of the most premium materials out there but it still feels really good in the hand and this thing is really light it threw me off when I took it out of the box but the button placement is just horrible. I hate how far up the buttons are, they're not really centered, and having the power button on the left hand side just kind of drove me crazy. But the form factor overall is awesome. They did a great job at fitting that size of the display in this phone with front facing speakers and making it manageable with one hand still. The Idol 3 features a 5.5 inch 1080p IPS display with a PPI of 401, a screen to body ratio of roughly about 72%, and it features Dragon Trail instead of Gorilla Glass for protection. And honestly, I'd be lying if I said this wasn't one of the best. 1080p displays I have seen on a smartphone to date, especially a smartphone in this price range. Viewing angles are awesome, the display is super sharp, and it actually has great color reproduction. Even outdoor visibility is still really good, but the display is a bit glossy, so you might have to crank up your brightness depending on how bright it is outside. Now when you're looking at your display, you might notice that the icons or the text might appear like it's sitting on top, and that's because it's a laminated display and it gives off this floating effect. And as you can see, it doesn't sit flush with the casing of the phone, it kind of sticks out a little bit. In terms of software, the Idol 3 is running the One Touch Launcher, which is a slightly skinned version of Android 5.02, and luckily it's not too bad. Some of the icons aren't really the best looking and some of the features I really don't use, but it's really not that bad overall. For instance, you have app shortcuts on your lock screen for your calculator, your contacts, your music, even to take a selfie or even a QR code reader. But honestly, I really didn't use any of these, but if these are the type of features that you use, you won't be disappointed. They're very fluid and responsive. Or if you're like me, you can go into settings and just disable them. So like I said, the One Touch Launcher is pretty much a stock version of Android. It's lightly skinned. And as you can see, even in the app drawer, you're pretty much getting like a stock Android Android experience, but the icons just to me aren't the most visually appealing. But that's okay though, you can replace it with a custom launcher from the Play Store. You do get a bit of lag with the One Touch Launcher, but I replaced mine with Nova Launcher and now I have better icons and overall it just improved fluidity a ton. If you guys are interested in the icon pack that I'm using, it's actually called Moonshine and again you can pick that up in the Play Store and usually you can find it right around the Nova Launcher area. 
You do get some gestures built into the software and you have the ability to turn your phone over to either A, mute an incoming call or B, you can silence an alarm. And you also have the ability to double tap on the screen to wake it up. So if you pull down your notification toggle, you'll notice an option for reversibility. So if we go ahead and turn that on, you can see a little disclaimer pops up. You just click that. You don't want to see it again and tap OK. But what it does is it allows you to use either end of the front of your phone to answer a phone call. Now, from what I understand, this is the only phone on the market that uses both front facing speakers and both microphones placed at the top and bottom of the phone to give you the ability to answer a phone call in any manner that you see fit. And as you can see, you get a nice little animation there whenever you flip the phone over. Another Another really cool option is found in the lock screen security area and it's called ID and what it does is it allows you to use your eye print to unlock your phone. So similar to a fingerprint but it detects the portions around your eye and of course your retina itself to unlock the phone. During the setup process you'll actually be looking in that little box that I just showed you and then a dot will go all the way around that box and then you just track your eyes to that dot. And once you're done you're pretty much all set up and as long as you're in the same kind of lighting all you'll have to do is just look at the front facing camera and your phone will unlock. But if you're not in the same kind of lighting, you'll be forced to track that dot again. It's not the most accurate and it's definitely not the fastest way to unlock your phone, but it's still a pretty cool feature. You also get the JBL audio equalizer, but that only works when you have the headphones plugged in. And overall, the software experience has been great, especially after a custom launcher. To power all this software, you're looking at the OctaCore 64-bit Snapdragon 615. You have two gigabytes of RAM, and then you have the Adreno 405 for graphics. And most importantly, you do have NFC with this phone. So you'll be able to use Android Pay in the future once it's updated. Now as far as gaming goes, gaming has actually been really really good. As you can see here, the Walking Dead game is playing. It's not really the most high intense graphic game, but I experienced no stutters at all. I played a few other games such as a fishing game, I also played a racing game, even Mortal Kombat X, and really none of them gave me too many issues. Mortal Kombat X did lose some frame rates and that's to be expected because the GPU isn't super powerful. But for most of your games that you're playing on your phone, you should be just fine, especially for day-to-day -day tasks, whether you're browsing the web, texting, calling, whatever it is you're doing, you'll be just just fine doing it. You're not going to notice any stutters or hiccups or any problems with performance. The back of the phone does get warm when you're doing intensive gameplay or even downloading a lot of apps, but I didn't find it overbearing and it's definitely not hot by any means. It's just slightly warm to the touch. So to power all this, the Idol 3 is pushing a 2,910 milliamp hour battery and I found the results to be more than stellar. And honestly, I'm getting anywhere between three and a half to four and a half hours of on-screen time and that's not bad considering the price of this phone. Now it's not going to give you third gen Moto G kind of battery but to me the 1080p display on this phone is beautiful and it's going to give you enough battery life plus standby time is not bad. The 13 megapixel camera found on the Idol 3 is capable of giving you some beautiful photos and the software is actually very simplistic as well but oh, I got mixed results with mine. Some were overexposed, some were underexposed but instead of just talking about it I'm just going to go ahead and show you some sample photos. So in conclusion, the Idol 3 is definitely going down in my book as one of the best budget smartphones. For 250 bucks, you're getting a great all around package. And I will be looking at the 4.7 inch Idol 3 next, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and drop me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any more reviews. Go ahead and follow me on all my social media connections to stay connected. And of course, I'll talk to you in the next video. Peace.